Brandon Jones, the one and only, the far first of my name, um, a host, content creator, and also a pretty boy. <laughs> what about t-shirts? Oh yeah, I'm also um, uh, doing the match. I'm also the brand ambassador of the match. <laughs> That's why you can see good in the my limited edition of Calc. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Ben Sam. I'm the co-host of um, the, the main segment of Focus My Life. K. Leon, the producer. <laughs> the one that people have been asking, could he, that I mean in duty, was it, yeah? So basically, uh, this is me. And um, yeah, Dangori producer, producer Podcast My Life. Yeah. Oh, okay. Leon comes from my real name, which is Noel. So if you write Noel, it's N-O-E-L. Leon, it's L-E-O-N. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. K is for the surname. You won't know for now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my government name, Bridget Lee Dede. Maro on Podcast Malawi, I'm a host for Hit or Miss segment and also producer, the junior producer. Junior. Oh, okay, producer. <laughs> <laughs> the producer is short. Producer. <laughs> Associate producer, whatever. Uh, my name is Moisa Hamiko Soya. And my position at Podcast Malawi, I'm a social media manager. I'm a co-host and accountant. <laughs> <laughs> accountant at Podcast Malawi. All right. Yeah. Um, my name is Gertrude Gugu Mlanga, but here on podcast, most people know me by my middle name, which is Gugu, and um, the podcast coordinator. being home i do manage some social media pages for some should i say companies but i won't mention them because some people may take that hate that they put for me on tiktok oh my god with those pages <laughs> i i do i do write some pages for some social media uh, for some companies and then also stay home play with my little sister mm-hmm. that one who always hurts you yeah that one she's always pretty, pretty. But yeah my favorite person <laughs> Well, um, a brother, a friend, a lover. <laughs> uh, I work, I have a nine to five job, uh, which is, I mean, it's something. And also I'm a professional Malawian. Uh, to be a Malawian is one thing and to be a professional Malawian, we don't got a CV, but it's another thing. So yeah, I'm a survivor, but also I'm a martial artist at heart. Yeah, it's 8 to, to 20 or something like yo man I, like i go to work at eight o'clock and then 20 hours i'm still there sometimes 24 hours but yeah so let's just call it a nine to five for the sake of my boss <laughs> <laughs> all right apart from being part of the podcast team i'm a producer actually at absolute filmworks uh, a photographer, a videographer, everything there. Yeah, I think whatever in general. So, uh, I'm a co founder there, and uh, yeah, it happens that. Are you a co founder? I'm a co founder. So, like, okay, you can't have two founders. So, yeah, mm. yeah, my friend is a, is a founder, I'm a co founder, and a producer there. Yeah, and uh, maybe some little, little entrepreneurship things, you know, but uh, that's what I do. Yeah. You sell gadgets. (laughs) (laughs) Sell gadgets. (laughs) Yeah, sure. What do I do? Mostly what I do right now, I don't really put it out there because I think I've lived my life putting my work out there. So I think... As I have been growing, I, re- I decided not to put as much. 
So I mostly don't market most of my work. I would like to stick to a little bit of more of corporate work. But a few years back, I was more into mainstream media, which, con which involved a lot of wedding shooting, photography, personal photography events, as a joint shows or so. But eventually, I do a little bit more of corporate. But I just made a conscious choice. Could you know? In the meantime, I shouldn't mostly put my work out there. So I don't mostly market to the audience as I used to before. And I think a lot of you ask me, oh, "What's going on? What's this and that?" And actually, think uh, most people. Some people actually think this is my main job, being a host. So yeah, people think I make a lot of money from podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> So currently, I'm um, a part-time lecturer at Chancellor College, and um, I'm also a consultant for some companies, uh, both local and international. And um, well, I mostly fashion designer on the side, and other, 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 other things. So yeah, other, other things. And then what business? <laughs> and a business or tamanga tamanga. Okay. Yeah. My band. My band more fire or chiba. But we need banazo. Yeah. I saw uh an advert that my talented was looking for a producer. So I saw it and then I was like, ah, this is not for me. And then my cousin sent me the same advert, like, man, can you try this? I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I didn't. And then uh, my other friend sent me that too. And it was more like, they were just coming. I was like, maybe four people sent me that advert and I was like okay maybe I should give it a shot maybe it's a call or whatever so yeah I I sent my portfolio there and uh, uh, I ended up making it to the most uh, the selected ones <laughs> and I was given a footage to edit which footage was it was episode was it 12 or 13 somewhere that I was yeah, with the yeah, certain hip hop artist. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. So I edited that one and uh, it ended up that I was I was given the job to, to be the producer. Um, I think the first time I heard about the podcast, it was uh, TikTok. So my snippet to wait, I mean, I saw, I think Mali can interview a third eye or something. So it, was, it trended. I was like, oh, okay. So a Malawian is doing this thing. This, this is dope. Then, you know, Bas, you know, my Amba no go on out. I went in the journey then. I saw the YouTube channel. I was like, ah, oh, this is promising. And then, yeah, I didn't hear about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Through Brandon, actually. Because uh, me and Brandon uh, go way back. So when he started, actually, uh, podcast. I think that's uh, when I knew about it, that there was a podcast. And uh, so, yeah, I would watch some of the content, what he was doing and what he was talking about. And, yeah, the rest is history, I guess. First time I heard about it, I think, there was a party at the Foundation in Area 47. So I came across the guy who, who used to run it at that time. His name was Mac. I don't know if it was podcast money by then, but then I think it must have been podcast by Mac. So I met him and he was like, yo, I would like you to come over for a brief interview at my podcast. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. That would be my pleasure. So I think that was the first time I heard it before it actually evolved to being podcast Malawi. So yeah, when it became podcast Malawi, uh, I, I used to follow it on YouTube. And then there was a time there was an opening to have a few members in the team and I was one of the guys who, play, who applied. So being me, the top G, 
I think <laughs> I think they were like, there's no way this guy would want to join us and they couldn't believe it. And I'm like, yeah, you're lucky to have me in here. Yeah. This time I heard about Focus Malawi. I think you invited Evans Music. <laughs> so Evans called me and he was like, come on, hey, there's this other guy, Wendy Mbida, at the Fire Podcast. His name is Magnoni. Do you know him? And I was like, uh, no. Mangara will call her. There's a bar. There's a book. Yeah, because he's a friend. <laughs> so, and Abuela. That's when I went by usual book. We got one of the podcast Magnoni. Then, yeah. Damn, damn, damn. It was a nice thing. And I go now. Down and down and down. And I waited for the podcast here Evans it came out now Nina then I started following you know I think the other one was Yankee Yankee or Dead Devils yeah now and so but I started following it the interview that you uh, the the interview that was aired on podcasts uh, featuring physics he sent it to me like the link and then i had to watch the interview and all that yeah that was the first time knowing that we have podcast malawi in malawi there's a podcast existing in malawi that was the first time i don't really get stressed from podcast malawi so Whatever little stress, if the, if there's stress from podcast Malawi, it's not so much that I can worry about, you know. So if it is as little, could you know I can't worry. About. It's like having a flat tire. It's not the type of stress you really stress unless if you're going to an extremely important meeting, you know. Yeah. So there is stress, which is not a stress that I can lose sleep over. Um, I know consciously I can say I have a number of people that. I'm not comfortable with my presence on podcast Malawi because of uh, the attention it is getting and uh, the attention it is also bringing to them. I've been in the music industry, I've been in the entertainment business for some time, so some people who have been friends, they're not too happy about probably name dropping in our episodes as we... Uh, as we produce, as we make, uh, as we have my interviews, and my artist, and idea. So, um, yeah, but I think that's how podcasting is supposed to work. People talk about people. So, um, you, it's unfortunate people always are translated as me, Jedu, or talking about other people. But if, if you, if at some point in your life you had been with me, you have worked with me, I don't think you can talk about your personal life without mentioning my name. You know, yeah. So that doesn't mean Ogundi Jeda. You're just talking about your personal life. And at some point in your life, you worked with me. And if you talk about me, that's not Kundi Jeda. So I think it has been the case with a lot of people we have had on podcast Malawi interviewing them. Could you know, when they discuss about their lives, they could probably mention some other big artists we have in the industry and they find it a little bit uh, yeah stressful on their in like on their end yeah but back to stress i don't really think i stress so much about uh losing friends i would want to maintain such friendships because life is a journey i don't know how my life is going to be in the next 5 10 15 years you know uh so I'm in a space where I'm like, it's unfortunate we think like this, but I always look at uh, my podcast, Akunja, and tell me, I haven't come across a podcast where you can have an interview and you don't mention someone else. If there is one, please, I would want to see that. But on top of their heads, all cars, if they can mention five podcasts, so they can have a guest and they'll never mention someone in their chat please i can even bet something on it you know yeah um first of all that's the first thing secondly um i don't know if you've noticed uh, my, my, my guys i mean maronera yourself um 
And I'm a person that loves joking around. I'm, I'm goofy uh, a lot because now it's not for you people mostly, it's for myself. That's one of the best ways I can handle my stress. Secondary, I love to read. I read everything, uh, Christian literature, history, whatever, whatever, whatever. Thirdly, I'm, uh, I love, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with languages. So whenever I'm at my free time, I do these things. Also, I'm a martial artist, as I said. I have a brown belt in Kikoshini and an orange belt in, uh, what are you looking at, Bridget? Bridget has to go out. Yeah, I have a... <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah, I've, I've been training a lot. I also did a little a little bit of Tai Chi, which is very um, spiritual. So it calms me down because I meditate a lot. So yeah. Growing up, eh, I used to uh, involve myself with street fights a lot. And there was a point in my life I was like, you know what? I have to discipline myself. How do, you, do, do I do it? So I met a friend who was like, you know what? Since Umabanga Zande, join a martial arts group or whatever. Because martial arts could be discipline. So that's when I started um, doing uh, Kikoshini. I went as far as brown belt. And yeah, I did a lot of arts. And then I also did boxing a little bit. I was training Dima Gaiwara Matrenandi, the president of uh, boxing. Uh, boxing, whatever, whatever. Lonzo. In Chinji, my friend Uchi. Big, uh, big shout out to you. Tai Chi, it was because of uh, meditation. That was before martial arts. Yeah. A shot of gin. Yeah, like a shot of gin and a good sleep cures cures everything. Yeah. Oh, uh, like enough. I'm 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 someone who is always behind. You know, I'm behind cameras. Uh, sometimes I'm, I'm I'm in front of the mics, but most of the times I'm behind the cameras. I'm behind the production. I'm behind everything. Yeah. So I do I do even watch. Uh, the, the podcast when it's premiering and and it's funny because <laughs> I shoot I edit and then I watch when it's premiering I like the the, the, the live chat there as well <sighs> handling stress of being part of podcast Malawi uh, music poetry and sometimes when I feel really like right now people will be coming for me I stay away from podcast Malawi pages, especially TikTok because I know where that's where the there's more fire. So I'll be like, ah, oh, there's some snippets posted mostly about hit or miss because people will be just coming without even listening to Zint, without even noting good what I was saying, and then they'll be coming. Mazara, so I know good. Obviously, ugugu kuriungkondo. So I just ban myself. Kuri, you're not viewing any com- comment from TikTok until when I feel like I'm. I'm okay viewing them today. That's when now I'll view them. But when I know Woody, this one may put me like into some stress. I know that I don't. And then just music. When I saw Woody, I see Woody. I've just come across some stuff that I didn't expect. Music, poetry. Yeah, that's how I do it. Is it true that you have ever cried because of a, a comment? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was Misa saying that, right? Yeah. Ah, okay. So this is what happened. Personally, I was just having a bad day. Like, not even because of um, social media. <laughs> so, having a bad day, I did not even plan to go on the page to view whatever is happening. But I was scrolling on TikTok. Sometimes when I have nothing to do, I'll be just scrolling on TikTok. I'm scrolling on TikTok. I came across this other snippet of ours. I don't know what we were saying, but it was something good. But TikTok people, as usual, they had to come for me. And then I'm like... I'm already having a bad day, so it was just boring. It just made my day more boring, but I've never cried before because after all, I don't let comments to bring me down to that point of crying because I know they'll always say it. That's that's that, that's how our segment is. They'll always come for it. So that if I'm to cry, that means I'll always, I'll, every, every Thursday, that means I'll be crying. So yeah, and that was when the segment had just started. So yeah, but I didn't cry. It was, it was just a boring day and then came some those comments and then I was like ah oh, this is bad just made the, it just added a certain percentage to the boredom that i had i enjoy it man i enjoy it like where i grew up now if i know the hey my stress and my well until i was used to stress like being bullied not so much because i could stand up against it 
Yeah, so Alias I'm gonna bring a bully in the mana. I'm a coward, he's ready to fight, not just bully. Because I'm a source of the I will stand up. Yeah, so diga diga panoba. I got used to it. Montu kundine na kose. I talk shit more than most of the people I know. <laughs> most of the people on social media, I talk shit. So that's my world. I expect that all the time. Oh, diga can di pa Facebook when I talk shit. My source of the kubu elantu. They will be fighting back. So if I'm pa page ya podcast malawi diga not pa bila elantu alu kwa na is no more to me. Yeah. I'm going to go to the house. Yeah. I'm going to Uh, maybe those comments that they tag podcast Malawi because if someone says podcast Malawi, whatever, 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 it means I'm included. So maybe those. Uh, but personally tagging me as Kelion, I don't think I've seen one. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm not a person that focuses on negative energy. So yeah. Uh, I don't know if they've ever been okay. I don't know. I don't know if I can pick one. Could be the worst, but then just the negative comments that come there. Yeah. And then there'll be someone be like, "Oh, just was it yesterday? Uh, uh-uh, the day before yesterday. Thursday was the day before yesterday. It was like, oh, and then that's okay. But woman, them only bunya doesn't turn. So <laughs> I don't normally stalk people who say bad about me, but with the confidence that he had, I had to go stalk him. I mean, it's a private account, but saying from the profile that he had, I'm way better. I'm, I'm way better. It's a guy, a poor picture quality on his profile. I'm like, dude, you could have taken maybe a better picture quality on your profile, but I wouldn't say it's the worst because it was just funny because I'm like, where did you get the guts? So or maybe you're just having insecurities over what I'm saying because some comments, they come because people have insecurities about their, their artists. Because even though it was Zujan, it was... My comment on media, Alien Juice, it was positive. I'm like, I love that song, Magud, Magud, Magud. He had to come with the comment. So he's just insecure about it because I don't even know, like, Zugu is an abang. So he was insecure about it. Ah, yeah, whatever. People have insecurities about the artist and all that. So I would, there are a lot of bad comments. So I don't know if I can pick the worst. But some comments are just funny. Goody, where are you even getting the courage yeah. to say that? How do you uh, react with all the love uh messages from fans <laughs> who are always saying eh, Bridget, 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 people looking for your number you know there's a there's a team right people looking for your number <laughs> yeah I, i'm told goody hey the coordinator comes to me bridget people are looking for your number we have Misa, bridget people are looking for your number <laughs> we have leon bridget people are looking for your number then some will be like no you no one can go to me for looking for a number but for the comments i'm always grateful you know could it, like our segment it is a hard segment for it to receive some love from fans but then you see you still see out of those negativity that is there some people still rise and see the good in us could it, we're not people who were here to spread head but we're just giving out our opinions and they understand our concept so i mean from deep down my heart i'm always grateful for all the love that i receive Of course some people do approach me at my Facebook account be like oh Bridget I watch you on YouTube what 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 you're really doing a great job we appreciate it what what I'm like oh really thank you some people I can't even expect but I'm always always like to everybody who has ever showed some love to me got through Facebook YouTube whatsoever thank you so much I do appreciate that Kodi mamu denga kuti Kodi mamu denga kuti like I was I was hosting I was hosting I was co-hosting mm, Hero Miss and then I said something else and then somebody came and I don't know he could he could Brandon Brandon how did my mother go to Zina the nyasa I'm because nobody had more than Brandon I was like ah Brandon what did I go so what did I go 
That was so waste, come on. Zinas and Desmond Cars are down to Bass, man got it to one. Ah, you eh. Mazoba, similar to what you're saying. Mugononga industry. Mugononga industry. See, matter you zong, I just don't go see you in the other Spanish is in the other. Or also, you don't go to my own corner, see the other day. That don't bother me. That's a matter you zong. In person, it's very difficult for someone to come and stand in front of me and say some fucked up shit. It's very difficult. Um, there are not too many people who can do that. There are people who can do it, but there are not too many people because I try to respect people as much as I can to be in good books with a lot of people. And people who could come on social media and say crap about me, they don't really know me personally. And um, I really don't pay attention to that. And it doesn't really bother me. You've heard, you've seen the worst thing people have ever said about you. Uh, Puzo. Puzo is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Kunditugana, that's, that stuff cannot get to me. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the only time I had suffered mm. people coming after me, mm. it's when I had people I cared so much in my life. That was the only way people could come after me. Mm. So, people coming to me directly it, nothing phases me but when you come to someone special in my life that's the only way people could do it to get to me like come after my wife or come after my kids but i don't have that anymore i don't have children anymore i don't have a wife anymore so no one can get to me the worst thing that uh, fun has ever said to me was that i'm i, I was or I, they think that i'm dumb <laughs> It was bad for you, Woody. This person couldn't even spell what he was saying. So I was like, okay, cool. You call me dumb. At least clean your flipping nose first before you try to clean mine, man. Come on. Relax yourself. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, I think there was only one. But I can't really say that it was a bad thing. I don't know. It depends on perspective, maybe. But I think uh, it was the first time that... I appeared on, on air, on camera, because uh, before then I was always behind the camera. So I think the first time they were like, ah, so Google, like how she looks and how she sounds very, very different. So for me, it wasn't necessarily like um, a hate comment or something, because I, I do get that a lot. Not a lot. I don't think I should get that a lot. But yeah, I get that. That the voice and how people can actually think that you look like uh, can differ. And then they see you in person. Like, ooh, she's not dark. I feel like she's she's light. She's she's whatever. So yeah, I think that was the only, only thing. But yeah, the rest, I think, have always been quite interesting. I think the whole journey of me part of the podcast, me being part of the podcast Malawi is a happy thing for me. I'm saying that because firstly, I never knew I could be here. You know, I did journalism. So when you're out there at school, you're just thinking of being being maybe employed at some uh, media house and all that. I did not know much about something like this. Where we're having a podcast and I can be part of it. So, like, even when I was applying, I was a little bit scared because I did not know much. And then uh, the production side, like, the podcast just makes me happy because it helped me, should I say, overcome some of my fears that I had, like, in the working behind cameras. It's something that I always wanted, starting from uh, when I was doing my journalism studies. But then it's a site that is more dominated by male people than females so it's like can i really get a chance to do that so being part of the podcast just makes me see how far i've gone and how i've conquered my fears and some of the things that i was doubting like can it really work so the whole journey is a happy thing for me uh i don't think i can pinpoint to one thing there have been so many occasions where we've had uh episodes with a lot of energy and we could have fun before the episode during the episode even after the episode and such interviews could just be like legendary and there's some other things i can cherish uh just on top of my head i can talk about episode in Gadiam, 
an ape man episode in idea episodes even toast um who else um classic classic yes uh yeah yeah so i think my episode and i you know you could just have a lot of uh vibe you know you just have chat yeah we know and uh it's just amazing and on top of that me being part of this this it's um it's important it's um something that i cherish because um i know one day we are not going to be here and uh these are the things that people are going to go back to even my children who you said you didn't have When I say I don't have I mean they're not with me they're with their mother I didn't say they died they're with their mothers <laughs> so, so, um it's a uh, I think people we take life for granted because we think we're going to be here for a long time we're just uh, like can you always say it? we're just a blip in this universe we're just a blip you know a hundred years to the universe is like that's a hundred years so our lifespan is that's our lifespan one day we're not gonna be here when our first video hit 1000 views <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah when i joined the platform like we didn't we, we used not to have uh um, my views and be so There was a point you know you'd reach 50 and be like yeah wow man eh, this is great you know and then 100 and then 500 and then 1000 that was like this is a k you know so this is this is a pace a k which episode is that mm maybe around ever's music i think if, okay. if i'm not mistaken yeah, around episode 20 somewhere there if not 21 yeah so yeah it was back then yeah he brought some numbers and uh I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or bullying everybody <laughs> because I'm the coordinator. <laughs> so telling them what to do basically. But no, um let me see. No, I think each and every day is always is always a is always an adventure here at Podcast Malawi uh because uh I believe that uh each and every day is different from the previous. So every day brings in different experience, uh different moments and one not. So I think here I think because we have built we are more like a family. So we are idiots also. I wouldn't I wouldn't take that away from us. We are idiots and uh we like banter a lot. And trust you me there is a lot of things that we say on air. Most of them is sarcastic, but we make it to be so real. And I think that's what I love about the team is they can turn something that is a lie and make it sound very very realistic that you have done that and we like to do that a lot we turn something very stupid a lie and make it sound very interesting and I feel like that is one of the things that uh, it's fun and also brings us together and yeah and makes this place to be a very interesting environment so i think that's my my happiest yeah happiest moment na bita go zambia chief you know it's my first time we do some border malawi like we do some we repeat at you know so yeah it was a crazy experience plus um, apart from that i know man like this other day i posted today this year has been my oh, one of the greatest years for me yeah and one of the reason is podcast malawi yeah jambian we and the podcast malawi like ever since i started coming here it has been great man yeah. podcast malawi you know the <laughs> we joined and um it was a thing but it was more of a hobby yeah come here hang out with uh, you know Ben Sam celebrity Jaro so Santori hang out with uh, you know Bridget it's it's more of a family so i'm sorry i'm going to say this but for me to be Brandon Jones it was because partly i felt like i didn't belong to my family so i wanted to start my own clan that's how i felt don't put that on my family please if you come for my family i'm going to beat your ass yeah that's the first thing uh so 
um, seeing it grow as I was there it was one of my, my best moments. I remember when we did the interview with Tabitha Chawinga. Uh, it was one of the like the first uh, episode of Nabanga uh, Notice Woody. People are watching, people are interested. And also, for the record, I was going to podcast with Nabanga episode, I was going to air in a classroom. You get what I'm saying? So that was that was perfect. And also, sorry, I'm gonna say this. And then I'm gonna my views. I'm gonna I feel I'm gonna show you. I think so. Many more me at Nagamba. I want me to be with them. And thanks for the views. Come and get your revenue. Also, yeah. When uh, Leone Muiza made a big fuss that. Uh, Leon and Bridges' relationship had ended over, was it over chips or something? Because Bridget didn't want to share. I was like, oh, because you have found another person, so it's over. But then you come to my house. So it was like a whole big ruckus that if you had seen the situation, you really think that there was something going on between the two yeah. because Leon had his own emotions all up. Yeah. Bridget was trying to apologize. Mwiza was on the <laughs> corner. I swear to God, Mwiza was on the corner trying to add fire onto it. And then I was like, yeah. I remember, even last night she called me about this guy. And so, and I'm like, Yo, 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 what exactly is going on? So for me, I, it was very, very interesting. And then later on, Bridget and Mwiza became very, very close. I was like, I knew it. <laughs> Mwiza, it was all you. You're trying, you just wanted the girl. So it's it's really, really mad. So I think, yeah, that, that thing, it, it was very, it's very weird and interesting at the same time. Yeah. I don't know this. But crazy moments, they, they, they have been plenty, and most of the crazy moments they always involve Brandon. Um, Brandon is the craziest one in our team. Uh, people may not know that. People think he's funny, he's got a funny laugh. Yes, he does, but in real life, he's a crazy guy. He's someone who uh, can be unpunctual at some point. When he wants to be punctual, he's there. But there are some days he is just not gonna be punctual and he'll drive everybody crazy in the team yeah but until, once until we have uh, we have an enemy right yeah so we usually have to hunt him down we have to be detectives to find him find where he is because he'll make sure that he doesn't want to be found so i think some of the crazy moment is when he would decide oh, i'm not gonna be found but we still have to find him anyway and drag him to the studio and make an episode that's yeah. called pulling a brand yes yeah, so we call it to, yeah, to pull a Brandon. To pull a Brandon is when you disappear and, <laughs> and you make sure no one has to find you. Yeah, so yeah. Like last time I, I, I remember I had to call the coordinator. I'm like, look, I've tried my best, but we can't find Brandon. And the coordinator was like, thank you so much for your efforts. You know, but we kept on trying and luckily enough we got him and we managed to make an episode. But yeah, it's like in the end, they say all is well that ends well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, two. Two. One, Tina and the shoot. And we were waiting for Brandon to show up. <laughs> Brandon and I are so. <laughs> Instead of shooting a, a, an episode, Tina and the shoot and we are going to bring you. And we are going to bring you. And we are so we thought we were a manga because he was drunk driving. And that was fun. <laughs> Where this moment? Where this moment? Yeah. as a fact checker. <laughs> <laughs> on set <laughs> yeah that was fun as well uh, my weirdest i think i should just say generally the, the time when we sit down and then we talk about the comments uh. <laughs> yeah and then we'll be like we'll be going 
okay we don't sit down and go through all the comments but then the time when we talk about the comments and then there's some moment the, some comments will be like oh and all, all the comments that we make towards the comments that they made for us so that would be one of the weirdest um another crazy th- another weird one could be when brandon got lost he's gonna kill me if he finds out i said this <laughs> <laughs> he's going to kill me but it is weird to me because I, I i was kind of feeling should i say bad because i thought it was something so scary good mean he might have been in trouble he might have been involved in something bad because it was something that happened at night and then he gets found the next time you ask him he's like i was at home sleeping like really we were, lost. we were sad that you were lost and then you were at home sleeping so that was one of the weird ones yeah the weirdest i'll start with the weirdest before the funniest um so um the day that we recorded uh, classic it was a day already the previous night i was drinking and i was drunk i was almost out but we did the thing that was the weirdest that's why whenever i'm not drinking anymore this is Coca-Cola and water and uh, more water in form of ice. Uh, yeah, that was the weirdest. The funniest was um, when Ben was drunk. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I saw the unfuted uh, side of Ben and I had to be the Ben Sam. See, I'm the, now, I'm the goofy one. Ben, ben is the calm one and I had to be the... It was weird and funny at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> behind the scenes yeah. I would mention a couple episodes actually uh my episodes nip my episode and episodes episode yeah <laughs> yeah those ones were actually crazy yeah they were crazy and there's a lot that happened before and after you know so yeah I think episodes and nepman uh <laughs> okay even after the show no man couldn't even like tell what he does <laughs> yeah so i so i thought he just said it for the for, you know for it's just an interview and all that but then yeah i think it was real that whatever he does he just like you just can't put it out there yeah so for episodes uh after the show they got <laughs> got stopped by 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 the police the traffic yeah breathalyzer so hey you know so yeah it was something else None of these niggas. <laughs> give me a, like give me other team players. Okay. Um you know what? As I've said, it's a family. Um everybody has their own uh strengths, weaknesses and I like them differently. I love them at heart and they're all my favorite team players because Medina Borira won't go to San Amizani guys. Cinema Zuana. And people are, I think a lot of people have these questions when when we meet in the street like ah pen some tendem number is it pen some number is and I fits episode men mugabwera mbuyo episode we ambia men and don't have in the that was the first day men number is uh you know Kelly Leon the producer maziwa tika magonza na say pakut ba just men no kwenda yonchi that's where we built conversation and now we are family man they are all my favorite people mwiza kandala kwa dabisa bambili cool people <laughs> yeah so yeah everybody is my favorite <laughs> <laughs> Do I have mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, who's my favorite team? If I seems Google knows more. <laughs> okay, I don't think I have because like all of them all, all the people that I'm working with, they are unique people. So like they all have their characters separately. They all got yeah. I, it would be okay it could be hard for me to choose one no okay i can i can just explain put it this one is like this this, this. who calls you the most who calls me the most who calls me the most right now like recently i've been talking much with leon trust me trust me okay there's okay there's an imbalance of leon and misa yeah sometimes i'll be talking much to leon and then sometimes i'll be talking much to misa so yeah 
But me says annoying. Okay, they're both annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but you would see ah brandon is funny then some my protective yeah my big brother always protective yeah, yeah and then when it comes to me it's like, ah, so annoying and then when it comes to Yon, also annoying but at some point we chill bo -bo, we click bo -bo. so yeah. yeah my favorite team member mm. uh, that's a difficult question uh bridget bridget because i like to think she's a very good human being uh she's young and i like to think she's pure and uh <laughs> unlike <laughs> but then uh I like who? Brandon. <laughs> no brandon is a train wreck <laughs> uh, brandon is a roller coaster is a um, it's a very he's a lot of things in one person but if you look at Misa, Misa is a smart kid um he's an emotional being but he's a smart kid that's one thing i like about Misa. yeah but the whole team is a bunch of uh it's more like an avengers you just pick certain talents and put it together it's a, it, it, it's a beautiful team um i'll tell you because well basically he's my gossip buddy right so because uh there are times where i'm not here and there are things that are happening around uh not here at podcast just generally like outside and whatnot so he's the guy that feeds me the information you know he's like my little spy so he's the he's my eyes so we get to talk about things and laugh about things and whatnot i think uh he's also the first person that made me to feel comfortable here when i when i just started so yeah i guess maybe because of that background of him making me feel comfortable and and all of that so we built this kind of relationship where we just gossip about stuff bridget <laughs> bestie <laughs> bridget <laughs> bridget <I'm on> <laughs> yeah favorite member so sasifira <laughs> kaonera our favorite member used to be magnoni yeah back then uh because in most of the times we used to be like just two you know creating content who would shoot so many episodes for 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 maybe even four weeks in advance yeah so it was fun because he's someone that likes to keep uh schedule that bobo if we agree with it then it has to be 10 and all that and i like that too dina mtu jodi on kaje do we know i excuse me send me my phone i'm still coming hey mom mom just because i feel good you know so Uh, I felt like the bond was 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 something else but for the current uh, members that we that probably people see now uh I would say Brandon uh because of he's a vibe he's a vibe so I think people th they think it's an act it's not that's 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 him there too yeah they die and yeah <laughs> three <laughs> they die number one number two dead devils because i'm a huge fan of dead devils dead devils interview radio solo yeah from radio stations Nima village for a man if I get a good job i'm of you yes dead devils three I think classic classic a cover as episode of Beats. I was some fun good. Classic, yeah, that was fun as well. Right. Yeah. Out of 100 episodes. Yes. Come on. <laughs> uh, my favorite. Wow. This is this is tough. This is tough. You have edited almost almost yeah, yeah almost all of them. Um Uh, 
no this is tough i have okay i have ended with this one so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so maybe 100 might be the favor but i think i, I would go for k bandon yeah okay my favorite episode would be the nate man's episode for a couple of reasons um the first reason i think because it was funny but also because i have a, a background story with neymar like way back in in the uni uh I have a very uh couple friends of mine they were like top fans of neymar so each and every song that will come up so i remember like we just we're just crazy about it right so we had uh there were a couple songs that we just translate them in weirdly and you know and then we just jumped to it and whatnot so when he came for me he was like you know what uh some a person that would actually talk about and joke around about and whatnot is finally here and we're going to talk to him and so it was uh on that aspect it was very quite interesting but also there's also a backstory what happened that day um here podcast um usually we buy meals here right like whether it's dinner or lunch if we're working over time but that day because i was like you know what let me cook for the team and why not swear so i cook for the team and then i bring the food here and the team eats before the shoot of neat man right so everybody else eats everybody else is complimenting whatever nonsense they were trying to compliment and then the show happens to be a hit the comments that came after that it was not that um well guys it was the brandy the wine not no it was google what do you put in the food because everybody else just went crazy and even our ratings they have skyrocketed why not why not so it was it was quite interesting and like ah, i never cook for the team again i was no, like i'm the, never ah! the question is what did you put in the food do not continue with the question okay. we already established that it was nothing it was all love love <laughs> <laughs> my favorite episode um, <clears throat> uh one of my favorites uh, i have a lot of favorites but it's funny how my favorite episode in the od we didn't feature a guest it was just me and ben um i'm sorry to say this but i prefer those than yama yeah, guest not because i don't like guests but because uh, when we are talking, uh, when we are talking to guests, he might kind control narrative again. But when we are talking to each other, as Ben and me, he might kind of and I take this thing as therapy. So most of my favorite episodes are the ones that are just me and Ben, because we get to talk about things that are affecting me and other people out there. So yeah, it should be yeah, yeah. Uh, episode now, I guess so. I think, uh, yeah, in a Malaya red. And the uh, Yeah, that one. He's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm biased or whatever. The Nepman episode intrigues me because it's funny, it's educative, it's just, it's got stories. And that's why I like it. Because we could laugh a lot. And also, I, I think another part I like so much about is when there was a, his associate who had to come over and drop a freestyle. So to me, I think it's an episode which created so much traction and a lot of people enjoyed it as well. Yeah, so, but followed up by others. Mm, excuse me. I think probably my episode in you know, they are so good because people are terminating right now and they're so relevant, Gwambidi, so people would pay attention to them. But then if you look at my episodes, Odi, people paid attention because of what was happening or the stories that are there and we cannot forget Nepman. To me, I will still have it as number one. My favorite episodes, episode should be like a lot of them, but the one that I I like the one that we do on hit or miss, my favorite should be the one that we analyzed the uh, album Yadriamo. I just love that episode like studying personally of course i was too noisy that day i was too loud but i just love the episode it was should i say kind of positive for me just love it do you know that you're too loud yeah okay actually i should say joining the podcast made me too loud <laughs> <laughs> 
no. Okay. <laughs> Some of the team members can tell. Like at first I was too quiet. I couldn't talk much. But then I just realized that I'm too loud, especially when I'm the, on the podcast. Yeah, it, there was a time my dad told me, Guri, you're too quiet when you're at home, but then when you go out there, we know you're loud. So that just proves him right that I'm too loud, especially on the podcast. I'm too loud then. Maybe the normal days, maybe someone can meet me somewhere. Okay, like those Kushudia Zez. I was just there behind the cameras and all that. When that it was time for people, when Zez was performing, I was just doing the cameras and all that. Someone had to approach me. I laughed. <laughs> so yeah, I'm too loud, but it's maybe on on the podcast a lot. The podcast makes me loud. It was on the table. We had to push others. Uh, need this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not <laughs> nah, joking. <laughs> joking, come on. Ah. Nah, actually, I cannot do it with the social media. So, yeah, I'm about to find out about the money. I need, I, I need my share. <laughs> I need my share, man. Right. Yeah. The thirty thousand euros that we announced. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, Malibu, and I'm yet to buy. And my friend is waiting to carry my bus. I should make decisions. We have to bring in. I'm still making decisions about how I'm going to use it. I'm not done. Mm-hmm. I have to choose the colors that I may not a babe and Johnny. And also, don't forget, I'm I'm, I'm a, a very a, a very good fan of sweets, chocolates, junk foods. So I'm planning on using it on that. So. I'm, I've, I've not yet decided what to do with it, but I'm still, it's still in the planning processes. Yeah. <laughs> but this is December. I have to treat myself to something good. So. 30,000 euros. Yeah. 30,000 euros. In January, you may be seeing me fat. I know. I'm, mm-hmm. I don't want to say I'm thin, but I'm not fat. But in January, you may see me fat. So 30,000 30, euros is going to do something good. 30,000 euros. 30,000 euros. Okay. Um. Okay, uh, yeah, the amount is 30,000 euros, but then uh, we are not the grant holder. So there are actually other entities involved. Uh, so actually, then the money that I could say came to the podcast Malawi is not the 10,000. But yeah, we've done the project. Uh, we've, we've gone to, to the field shooting. Uh, we've edited. And uh, we are actually, we have delivered some of them and all that so i would say that's how we spend it <laughs> but for for whatever we do you know i would i would probably invest in whatever i do yeah yeah bring in some few gadgets and all that Thirty thousand euros uh i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> all I, I literally don't know what you're talking about all right and where did you get that information <laughs> on social media i got it on social media <laughs> Yeah, so I think people don't understand how the nitty gritties of that grant, and it's to me it's difficult to be talking about monetary issues involving. Uh, yeah, I usually think when you get such contracts, you have an NDA. As much as I don't have an NDA over it, I ethically I don't think I can be in a space where I can be discussing such. More about the guys. What else? I told you I like a short gin on the side. And sleep. So yeah, bottles of gin. Maybe oh, bottles. Yeah, bottles of gin. Yes, <laughs> bottles of gin, people. Bottles of gin. You see me glowing. If you can go back, uh, my first first episodes that I started appearing, and you see me now, I'm glowing. There's money. I'm swimming in it, people. I'm swimming in it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. First of all, I got a car. It's coming. <laughs> I got new shoes and um, I'm building a house. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing that um, 30 euros is different. 
Yo did it down, I don't see Papa Oma. Sin Kazola is a brandy. Thirty, I get thirty, I get thirty, I get thirty, I get so thirty manager in the Arab Posta. I designed the thirty euros, thirty thousand. Nin drama would be and talk about two senage, cinema. I was in Zamajiga. I'm so only in drama, don't you know? Quenda Bansuja, Zodan and Rose. So the car I'll start using my car maybe meet next year, just for just. I'm just telling you these guys because I'm excited. It's a hundredth episode, baby. And also, um, Eh, very Antoine Azungu agenda, you know. I say, could you pass a thirty thousand euros with this single banga spread head in the industry? Imagine, it's very simple. It's very simple. So yeah, that's how I'm using my thirty thousand euros, man. Ah, uh, the future is crazy. It's interesting. Um, it has been interesting for me because the moment we had uh, been pushing for numbers, not really for numbers, but we had been working on this, like the team has been pushing to make this grow. And some people were not so happy about it. And it's when I realized personally that, oh, we have to be on the right track. Um, you see, there are some people but, you know, they should always be a part of it. And if they're not, if they don't have their hand in it and it shouldn't really happen, it shouldn't succeed. And I think it's not a very good mindset because we're all here to improve the country. You know, we want this entertainment industry to grow. And it's not just about music. It's about film. It's about podcasting. We have we, we, we have seen the acceleration of growth in South Africa, in America. Come on, how many podcasts do we have in South? You know? So we need uh, to to um, to grow the industry because in the end, you, the amount of money that can come from entertainment, which can help other sectors of the country, people have no idea. Yeah, so come on, we have seen my country is Abuja. People and Tamadu Kungo here and Yembo Yemos. Your life changes. Don't we want to be there? Yeah. Where you a new artist can just come over, drops one hit song, and boom, everything for you changes. You have a big house. You have an a, you have expensive cars. But we're not there yet. Yeah. And these are some of the things that can improve this uh, uh, this industry. And for someone to go on live and be saying, I oh, know. Yeah, our industry is small we cannot be doing this and for someone to say we cannot be doing this it's like yo we don't want this to grow we should be i mean how are they the arbiters they actually think they're the arbiters of um of the industry if i was to call them the gatekeepers am i wrong it's not wrong you see because they will always they have the entitlement of thinking that they should control how things should be going who should hit and who should do what and it's funny because I've seen some social media, big platforms can only post good things about them. Anything else that is not in their favor, they cannot post. So there's so much politics going on in this music industry, which people don't know about, you know. And um, the future is bright. Um, the future is bright. Just make sure, could, you know, the team is tight. People are working together. The coordination is good. Everything is amicable. Bass. Otherwise, yeah future is really bright right. i would suggest people should get some sunglasses <laughs> it's gonna be so bright <laughs> <laughs> everything man because i'm already excited for the time being i can tell you i mean that crowd will know i'm always excited in the figure but space you know it's my cousin here and my card in the figure bridge that i will need to up and my card in the way i will not send it a ball this one like this other time that way i will not that's the best part ya specimen and my crack no like you have to forget gd your size manager on my talk crack no go zimi safoni funchani and then in the gang go to look at the one way yards then my phone you see so yeah this is the space i left come on going forward what i'm excited about is the growth man the growth and everything that has to come with it the pressure i love pressure pressure makes diamonds 
yes yeah, so everything that comes with the growth the future is amazing for 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 podcast malawi it's actually beautiful because we have seen ourselves grow within just a, a within this year and we're seeing that people are actually being more open to um online platforms where they want to uh hear interesting stories from people so we are seeing that this generation that is more open to such kind of platforms so i truly believe that there is growth and uh there's a whole lot of mindset change within our uh within the country uh the people of malawi there's a whole lot of mindset change so the growth is very beautiful and the support that we also receive and we are still receiving is amazing whether it's negative whether it's positive but it's all beautiful because people that want to hear stories things that they have they do not know about or that they have been curious to hear about so it's very the growth is there and there are so many stories out there that we really want to explore talk about and all that so yeah the future looks very amazing and very positive even though there's a 30,000 euro somewhere but i <laughs> i hear you people <laughs> i know we are still growing but then i'm excited because uh i feel like it's gonna be big to the point that maybe i couldn't even handle the production so i'm really excited yeah we have plans as podcast malawi team and uh and those plans uh whenever i start imagining about it yeah it's, it's, it's gonna be a different moment you know like having a new studio like you know this space is just too small sometimes if you didn't know now you do <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it takes a lot of magic behind the production to make it big but then i think if you have enough room you know enough enough equipment and all that i think it's going to be big big yeah the future looks promising a lot um kwambe next year my guys there's a lot coming through uh from me as a as a host as a match man as a brand ambassador of the match and also sort of the face of the the, po- the podcast Um I'm not promising anything Goma. I just have a feeling Godi is going to be bigger and better and yeah, we are going to love it. Both ways, if you and you know on and Uh the future looks promising, exciting, but at the same time a little bit scary because of some dreams. There's some dreams that are a little bit bigger personally. Yeah, so it is exciting. I'm excited to see those things coming, but a little bit scary when you're taking those steps. And about the podcast as I'm seeing how far we've gone now. I'm so excited about it because I'm seeing we're going bigger and bigger than before. So yeah, there's a lot to come. It is more exciting. So yeah. Migozi, I think Migozi works with people or the somehow we triggered. I don't blame them because you put your mouth where your money is. I don't know if that's the phrase. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah, yeah, you you don't bite the hand that feeds you. So you don't feed us, come on they feed them so we sanga kalora ali pamene vadya kuti push fe yo amene mwana ali na vanga trigger ma guys ema ke sorry akwajetsa aizo so i think that's the reason mwana ali na vanga trigger ma guys ena ke somewhere which we don't know who are the guys i don't know maybe you guys do but i don't know yeah cool. uh, are you excited about to do the phone yeah i am oh what did you figure now Oziru maoje nwana so ntaka marugoti ikamata December bas finito but yeah i am man na nwana fatsa ndibe jifuka jicho se choti ndicho kere kuno mwana ke ndrama ya kwila ichuruke kae but yeah i am excited man i think There are some certain 
entertainers that discourage that. I'm trying to pick my words carefully. Palantwe and I go chuga. I don't know, maybe Jijewa will sound better. Palantwe and I go chuga, you know, I'm a Zodim, Migo Zija. Okay, Migo makes money. It's a business entity. And yeah, Palantwe and I got me now about the business going to be in the world safe. And I'm a drink and a defend in Pixar. And I'm a Zodra Banga Bosti, Zaife, and when I say Sangala. That's just my thoughts. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah. This calculation is just coming on top of my head. And at the same time, I'm thinking probably also, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, like I said, I'm going to say, for example, I'm going to say, 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 I'm ya upstairs so go for now we that cannot happen to anyway <laughs> but my point is you're building a big house and you don't want anyone else to build a house bigger than yours so you make sure that good nyumba jose gumula mama you should be like oh our agumanga nyumba ya igulu yo bosta ya ine i'm motivated nibeze malo ina ni mange nyumba so ya igulu ku bosta ina good you know that way you have growth you're developing but i think we don't look at things like that in malawi the idea is and in nyumba yekula de sasa mange nyumba so yokula ku bosa yanga ndizi gumula akamamanga so that's what people are trying to do to podcast malawi they are trying to demolish the building we are trying to to erect erect not yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i think okay when i was growing up I had aspirations, I had my ambitions. And then one of it was to be one of the creatives, one of the good creatives in the industry. Be able to do billboards, get uh, work with publishing companies. So I managed to do that. I've uh, worked in communication sectors with... Uh, with um, uh, companies like uh, Megantine, the Megantine International, we've done so much printing with the billboards. So after that is when I had moved on to uh, photography. That was my next pinnacle. I'm like, I would want to be one of the biggest photographers. I started the industry back then. I managed to take it, to find myself as part in the industry. Back then people were like, yo, if you want to talk about good photographers, this is one of them. I was one of them. So. Um, my point is, I was, um, at some point I'm like, you know what? I want to be famous. In my translation, like I want to make a name. I did make a name, but I, then at some point I was addicted. I was addicted to fame. I'm like, you know, I gotta be famous. And I really didn't understand what fame is all about. Yeah, you know, you're, you're making me blush right now. You know, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> so anyway, um, I was. Um, I'm like, you know what? I want to be famous, and then I did what I had to do to be famous. I did. I ventured into the music promotion business, uh, the industry. I promoted artists. I worked with artists back then. Even up to now, I'm still doing that. And um, the photography business also was booming. So I literally made a name. But when you are so much addicted to attention and to fame, that is something you want to be feeding. And um, like I said, my goena, when you make a name, your life changes immediately. Uga hita, that's what you get. Boom, your life changes. But in Malawi, you really have to keep fighting for it but i've studied the industry for example th- when i was quite young in my 20s the biggest producers back then were timberland timberland german dupree dr dre yeah they used to make a lot of music by then they were the main guys who were making hit songs so but those are not the guys that people are talking about now 
Are they poor? No. They are filthy rich right now. What are they doing? They're not making music anymore. What are they doing? They moved to something else. This is something I had to tell myself. I'm like, okay, there was a time I was one of the biggest photographers. Do I have to keep fighting for being the biggest photographer? No, I can't be doing this thing forever. I go to the top of the mountain. Then what? I should fight to stay there? It's at the top of it. If you're smart enough, you find another mountain to climb. So basically what I did was, to be like, oh, there's a mountain over there. I want to climb it. But what I did, I'm like, I'm going to be climbing that mountain without talking about it. Yeah. The same way as in a Dre right now, they're making a lot of money. Silent. Silently. You know, <laughs> even as in a Jay-Z, they're not dropping hit songs as they used to, but they're making a lot of money, yeah. even more than the time they were on top. So that's how business it should be. I think that's in line with your question. You should be like, okay, if I'm in the industry, I'm supporting other new guys. Not good in You know, so you have to get to the level of, I think I've done what I've done. Like Mayweather. Mayweather did his 50 fights, no loss. He's like, you know what? I have nothing else to prove as a fighter. Let me make money by promoting younger guys. If you want it, but come on. As an artist who has been in the game for 20 years or whatever, still fighting for what? Mm. Not, not lifetime achiever, uh, achiever but... <laughs> <laughs> Best uh, song of the year. Yeah, whatever, like, you know? <laughs> so for what? Yeah, so basically I think and as we grow, we need to grow, but we shouldn't get used to this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm good at. There is more to life. There is more to life. I'm still a photographer, but you don't see me posting pictures every now and then when I do a job. Uh, okay, there is this misconception that people think we uh, we charge for people to be here, for them to tell their stories or just to have a chat with us. That's a lie. That's why I say misconception. We don't do that. If you want to come through and have a conversation with us, and why not come through where our doors are always open we get to talk about anything else that you want us to talk about so yeah we do not charge for any of that um guys we're all a big whole bunch of family here in malawi right we are so let's keep the love let's keep the love let's keep the hate in fact i thrive on the hate also like i swear to god it, it's what keeps me asleep at night and so beautifully but let's keep the love like you have shown us so much love this year and next year it's another whole big year and there's a lot that you have to look out for we have big ideas better ideas this year we had interesting ideas but next year guys it's a whole lot of fire so keep watch out of that let's keep on with the love let's keep on with the hate thank you for always loving us thank you for a wonderful year that you have given us we appreciate you we love you we care and we are here to give you beautiful content so yes peace my people my last words going to the haters but about my segment, Mango Kala, my opinion is that I always say that because I'm a fan of Go Five Forty, my Kari, my Panga declined and but yeah, it's about music. I talk about music, my opinions. So that I'm a kind of fact. Two, I just I'm in a feeder. No one up YouTube, my brother, my guys, we can go better segment. Day five, I'm not in ten ten ten. My brothers, my guy, I'm Sazafi. To the fans, to everybody who loves the podcast. Thank you for watching the podcast. Continue loving it. Guy for the head. Uh, I mean, it's not really bad. It's it's head, of course, but still. When when uh, there's those moments where when our clips are getting more head, the trend a lot. So continue doing whatever you do to the podcasts. Continue following it, guy. It's the head. Continue hating it. Guy, you misinterpret our opinions. Continue doing it, but after all, there's no bad publicity, so it has a. It, by, by the end of the day, it still has a positive impact on the podcast. So, thank you for that, for doing that. Continue doing it. Are you actually going to 
peste teme. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, if you don't see me, just, just know that I've gone to Israel, you know. So yeah, but don't worry, I can die there. <laughs> And if I come back, I'm gonna bring gear, gear, gear. Hey, gear. You know, you should be a man to So yeah, come on. Anyway, uh, I would say if you watch without subscribing, please just subscribe. Let's grow the brand, you know. And um, and just never subscribe personally. And maybe they they, they, they don't never <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> And even if it's a good episode, you never upload in their cup from the back end. And then even the best as well as suggestion would be, "Kubayari anyo anir." So I'll be like, "Okay, not notify me." <laughs> yeah, that's all I would say. But shout out to the team. My mother said, um, "Brandon, I don't know what podcast is. I've been seeing you all over social media, but go for it." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> thanks, mom." I didn't think you'd watch that because I like at the beginning of the show I used to cast a lot, a lot, a lot. Not because I stopped, I still cast in my head. Uh, I don't cast on camera any, anymore because I made personal commitments. I'm Brandon Jones. If you meet me as Brandon, what family what? The surname I don't say here. I'm anyway is a very cool guy. Come. Because Brandon Jones is the brain. You're talking directly to the brain, the mind, the unfiltered one. So don't cross me. My last words are 100th episode. It's gonna get bigger and better than this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being there. Keep on subscribing. We love you, niggas. And fu. Musika, muzi zodi.